Oh, what I learned in the Colel and BRS. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to start us with our sponsors. Uh, Dr. Paul Konigsberg, in memory of his brother, Dr. Sam Konigsberg, Shimon Ruven Ben Labush, and Ed Goldberg's cousin, Nissen Hara, Nissen Ben Fardosa. Paula and Bob Bromberg, in memory of their dear friend, Julian Smith, Yehuda Ben Yisrael. Amalka Mann, in memory of her family murdered in the Holocaust. Harav Tzvi Hirsch Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. The many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush, Moshe Shalom Ben Yitzchak Halevi, friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova Bad Yisrael Dove, friends of Malka Levi, Malka Bad Yosef, friends of Avi Gitler, Avra Meir Ben Shimon, Cheryl Sher, her children and grandchildren, in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael Ben Harav Akiva, Marsha Fetterbush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Fetterbush, Oriel Ben Harav Shimon. A week of learning, sponsored by Minnie Shavrik, in memory of all those we lost in the past year, by Sigi and Lala Bessler, in memory of his father, Dov Berish Ben Mishulam Fivish, by Yossi Peleg Billet, in memory of his father, Mayor Ben Shmuel, by Herschel and Smira Senate, in memory of his mother, Reit Sebas Yitzchak Yaakov, and her mother, Shoshabat Avraham Halevi. Today is the 29th, is also a day of learning plus Torah fund by Emmanuel and Carol Meller, in memory of his father, Tzvi Hirsch ben Menachem Mendel, as well as a day of learning by Leona and Walter Friedrichs, in memory of her mother, Miyasha Bas Moshe. May the Shamas have an Aliyah, Krenka Rafia, Velti Yashir, Rashem Atalia, and Lachol Ben Israel, a good Gaben Shiar. Amen. Okay. All right. Amud Chet, Amud Aleph. Right. We got a few lines down where we saw basically. Matzot shel Maser Sheni ledivrei Rabbi Meir ain Adam yotze by yedei chovato Pesach, according to Rabbi Meir. Okay, if the matzah is made from produce of Maser Sheni, one doesn't fulfill the obligation. The divrei Chachamim yotze by yedei chovato Pesach. On the other hand, according to the sages, one would fulfill their re matzah requirement on Pesach with matzah made from maser sheni produce. Making a comparison, etrog shel maser sheni, the divrei Rabbi Meir, according to Rabbi Meir, when we say that it's an etrog that was from maser sheni, ein yotze bo yedei chovato biyomto, one doesn't fulfill his obligations, okay, for the holiday, the divrei chachamim, Whereas for the sages, Adam Yotse Bo Yedei Chovato Biyomto. A person does fulfill his obligations. Okay. Now, um, so the question of Masa Sheni, okay, I just want to clarify since we saw, really is the question, uh, there's an underlying question here. Okay. Since we say, Maser Sheni must be brought to Jerusalem. Okay, either itself or to be redeemed and the money brought to Jerusalem and then that money used for foodstuffs in Jerusalem. An underlying question here is who is really the owner? Is the owner the person themselves? Okay, when they own the product, or they own the money, or is the fact that once you bring that product, or once you bring that money to Jerusalem, does that Maaser Sheni, I'm going to say item, become like Hekdesh, and therefore it's no longer 
the property of the individual bringing it, okay? Rabbi Meir would therefore say, it's like hekdesh, and therefore no longer the property of the person. Chachamim say, no, it's still the property of the person, and therefore they can fulfill whatever the obligation is. And in this case, okay, with Maser Sheni for Pesach, they would have to eat that matzah in Yerushalayim to be Yotze. Okay? Now, having considered this idea, the Gemara is now going to present the following. Mat Kifla Rav Papa. Rav Papa is going to challenge. Okay? Bishlema Esa. That's acceptable when we're talking about the dough. Dechtiv, why? Because it says, Ariso Techem, Mishelachem. Because when it says your dough, it means it's yours. It's yours. Okay? In other words, the person bringing that Maaser Shani item, produce into dough, bringing it, etc., it's yours. Etrog, Nami, with regards to the Etrog also because it's written because it says you shall take or take for yourself okay again yeah hey that's what it should be namely it should be yours but in regards to the situation of the matzah me kativ matzat chem is it really written your matzah in that case? So that would seem to be implied that Rav Papa tends to think according to Rabbi Meir in that situation, that if it was matzah brought as opposed to actual dough. Amar Rava. Rav is going to try to answer. Ve'itema Rabbi Yimar Bashlamiya. And others say it was Rav Yimmer Ba Shlamiya. Acha Lechem, Lechem. We had, can make a Gezerah Shava, okay, based on the word bread, Lechem. Namely the following. Kativ Hacha, Lechem Oni, right? In regards to the Matzah, right? It's written that it's supposed to be Lechem Oni, poor man's bread or bread of Oni whether we explain that as poor man or bread of affliction, uktiv hatam, and elsewhere it's written, vahaya ba'ach lechem mi lechem ha'aretz. Okay? Namely, and it shall be that when you will eat of the bread of the land. Ma lehalem mi shelachem, afkan mi shelachem. Okay? So since it's yours there, okay, here too it's got to be yours. Okay, now the Gemara tells us, Lema Misayele. Let us say that then this supports the view, right? Okay, Asa Shil Maaser Sheni Ptura Min Hachala. Okay, that the following Brighta, where we have dough that's made from Maaser Sheni produce, is exempt from Chala. Devre Rabbi Meir. That's the view of Rabbi Meir. Okay implying it's not a person's dough, therefore they have no obligation to take challah. V'chach omrim omrim chayevet. Okay, but the sages say that one is obligated, right? Lema Messiah asks the Gemara, do we really say that this seems to support, okay, this view? Hainu hach, isn't that exactly the brighter, doesn't that brighter actually tell us clearly that's the case? Hachi ka'amarle. This is what it means to try to come and tell us. Lema de mefligei be'esa. Let us say that they disagree regarding the dough. The dough. Okay. Bahanach nami mefligei. Okay. And then these other things also. Okay. It could be that they disagree. Or Dilma, or perhaps Shani Hatam. It's different there. Dechtiv Ariso Techem. 
because it's written your dough, arisotechem tre zimne, because it's written your dough two different times. Okay? In other words, there the Tana might agree, okay, that uh, with Rabbi Meir, that it's got to be the personal property of the individual. But with regards to Esrog, he could disagree and say that's according to the Chachami. Okay, so we don't have an answer really from there. So the Gemara continues and raises a question by Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. So Bresh Lakish is asking the following Shaila. Mahu she adam what about the possibility, asks Reish Lakish, that a person could fulfill their obligation with the challah, okay, made from the grain of Maaser Sheni in Jerusalem? Aliba de Rabbi Yossi Haglili, lo According to the view of Rabbi Yossi Haglili, Okay, we don't have any problem. There's no uh, inquiry here, right? Hashta b'cholim lo nafik. Why? Because in this case, with unconsecrated uh, produce, one doesn't fulfill the obligation. B'chalato mibaye. With regards to chala from Maser Sheni, do we really have to ask? Ki tibaye. Lach, when do you have to ask the question? Aliba de Rabbi Akiva, according to the view of Rabbi Akiva. Okay, because it's Rabbi Akiva who says that Maser Sheni produce, okay, for making the matzah is acceptable. The chulun who denafik, why? Because with unconsecrated item, he says it's yotze, one fulfills the obligation. De imitamu. Because if the Maser Sheni item, okay, produce becomes impure, Yesh Lahen Heter Bemoshavot. In that case, you could still eat that produce, okay, yeah. especially that matzah made from that produce in the surrounding communities, okay? If it becomes impure ritually, it can be really eaten anywhere. Aval chala, but chala, de imatamia, because but chala, right, which is supposed to be designated, okay, for kohani, right, lit le heter b'moshavot. There is no permission granted to eat it elsewhere. Lusrefa azla, and it's supposed to go for burning. Lo nafik. Therefore, one doesn't is not yotze in that situation. O Dilma, says the Gemara, or perhaps Amrinan Ho'il, or perhaps we hear say here the concept of Ohil. Ohil, remember, is the concept that we're suggesting since this is possible as a result. Okay, what is the Okay, the end result. And here's our ohil. Ohil, the ilu lo kara aleha she, chala. Since it's possible that he did not designate it as chala. Okay, in other words, it has to be physically or at least orally designated. The it may, and it became tame, it la heter bemoshavot. Then it's possible that it's permitted in the community. Venafek bay, and one is yotze with it. Hashta, nami nafik. Is it possible then that here too, he could be yotze? So the Gemara tells us, honey, there's a letter. da amre, and there are those who say it this way. Ha vadai lo tabayela. Here, indeed, you don't have to inquire. Devadai amrin and ho'il. Because certainly we imply the concept of since. Since it's possible, such and such, therefore, 
Okay? The end result. Ki Where is it that one has to inquire? Chala halakuach bekesef ma'aser sheni. It's a situation where that chala has been purchased by ma'aser sheni money. Va'ali the rabbanan. And therefore, it's according to the rabbis, lo tebailach. You don't have to inquire about it. Kevan da amre yifteh. Because they say it's possible to be redeemed. Hainu maaser. And that would make it similar to the idea of any tithe, of any maaser. Ki tebailach. When therefore do you have to ask about it? Aliba the Rabbi Yehuda according to the view of Rabbi Yehuda, as the Gemara is going to tell us, the Amar Yikaver, because in that situation, Rabbi Yehuda doesn't permit the redemption, but he says it must be buried. Buried. Okay. Ditznan. And now the Gemara is going to give us the, the actual Mishnah, where that Machloket is presented. Ditznan is taught in the Mishnah. Halakuach bekesef maaser sheni shenitma, one who purchases with money maaser sheni produce that has become tame, yifde may redeem it. Okay, and notice there's no uh, tanakama here. We have to assume is the opinion of the, the Mazal, of the rabbis, because the Mishnah then continues. Rabbi Yehuda Omer. Yikaver. And Rabbi Yehuda disagrees, saying it must be buried. So the Gemara continues. Mi Amrin and Ho'il. Do we use here and say it's the concept of Ho'il, of sins? Ve'ilo Lakua. And if it were not purchased, Have, that's the case. Ve'ho'il. And then we might again say sins. Velo kara ala Hashem. And then we would perhaps they didn't call it, in other words, didn't name it or designate it as Chala. Ve'itme, and it became Tame. Yesh lo heter b'moshavot. Then it would have, in other words, we're using two ho'ils in this case. Right? Right? And therefore, in that case, when it implies that it could be eaten then in the communities, Venafig bay, and therefore be yotze with it. Okay. In other words, is it such the Gemara's underlying concept of ho'il usable just once, or could we use it twice? Hashdanami nafig bay. Here too, we might say that perhaps he can be yotze with it. O Dilma, or perhaps says the Gemara. Chad ho'il amrinin. We can only really use the concept of ho'il just once. Tre ho'il, lo amrinin, and two uses of the concept isn't something we don't do. As a question. Amar Rava, says Rava, mistabra, sham ma'aser chad ho. So Rava's answer, okay, the name Maser is one. One fulfills his obligation with the chala of Maser, okay, even if the food is purchased with Maser Shani money. Okay, so that really doesn't answer our, um, what I'll call our procedural question as to whether Ho'il can be used twice or once, but it seems to imply at least that Rava feels that maybe only once. Only once. Okay. Now, our bright, our, our Gemara continues with a new piece from our Mishnah, right? Chalat Toda, Urikike Nazir Vechule. Okay. That's where we said that the uh, unleavened wafer. I'm going to use that term specifically so we don't get the term matzah confused. This unlevered wafer that is brought in association with the toda offering or unleavened wafers 
that are brought, that's the Rikike, along with the Nazir as part of his offering when he finishes his Nazareth uh, uh, status, right? Okay, we're told that one can't use those, okay, normally, okay, to fulfill the, the matzah obligation. So the Gemara asks now, Minahani Mili, what basis do we know this? Amar Rava says, Rava da Amar Kra. Why? Because we have a Pasuk. And the Pasuk is going to tell us as following as we flip over to Lamed Chet Amud Beis, Ushmartet Et Matzot, and you shall guard or safeguard the matzah. Matzah hamishtameret l'shem matzah. It implies then that it's got to be a matzah, a wafer, okay, that has been guarded for the purpose of being matzah. This excludes, I'm going to fill in, any other kind of unleavened wafer when it's not been guarded for the purpose of becoming matzah. But rather, when those other unleavened wafers were utilized for the purpose of being associated with, with a soup. meal offering, a meat offering, a sacrifice. Okay. We go on now. Rav Yosef is going to want to present it, the explanation based on a different uh, perspective. Rav Yosef Amar, Amar Kra, he suggests a different pasuk. Shivat Yamim, Matzot tochelu, that seven days you shall eat matzah. Matzah ha-ne'echelet l'shivat yamim. It's matzah that's got to be eaten, okay, for seven days. Yatzta zo she'ina ne'echelet l'shivat yamim. That excludes any kind of, and I'm going to say matzah in quotes, unleavened wafers that are not eaten for seven days, namely, but rather only able to be eaten for a day and a night. night. Okay, that's clearly those wafers, those unleavened items <laughs> that are offered usually with korbanos, with sacrifices. Now, Gemara wants us to know this, is this really a machloket between them? Because they cite different psukim to justify it? The Gemara goes on to say, Tanya Kavate de Rava. There's a brighta that teaches, that seems to support Rava's explanation and his use of one pasuk. Vitanya Kavate de Rav Yosef. And there's another brighter that seems to support the Pasuk and approach used by Rav Yosef. And the Gemara will cite them for us. Tanya Kivate de Rabba, the brighter that's taught, teaches in support of Rabba, Yechol Yetze Yadei Chovato, Bechalot Toda Urikike Nazir. One might have thought that one could satisfy their Passover pet matzah obligation using the chalot, the loaves, in this case, associated with the toda offering or with the wafers of the nazir. Talmud Loma, but instead the Pasuk tells us, ushmartem et ha-matzot, that one must safeguard the matzahs. Matzah ha-mishtameret l'shem matzot. It's matzah loaves, unleavened items that have been guarded, right, for the sake of being matzah for Pesach. Yatztazo she'ena mishtameret l'shem matzah elam That excludes 
any unleavened items that may have, right, that were not watched, guarded for the sake of matzah for Pesach, but for the purpose of an offering. Okay? Tanya Kivate de Rav Yosef. And we have a brighter that teaches according to Rav Yosef. Yechol Yetse Adam Yede Chovato, Bechalot Toda Urkike Nazir. Again, we might have thought that one could fulfill that Passover matzah obligation with loaves associated with the Toda offering or with unleavened wafers associated with the Nazir's offering. Talmud Loma, our text teaches, Shivat Yamei Matzot Tochelu. Seven days you should eat these Matzot, these unleavened items. It's got to be matzah that can be eaten in the course of the seven days. Except it excludes any kind of item that can't be eaten for the seven days, but only viable to be eaten. A day, day and a night. Okay. So the Gemara picks up and asks an interesting question. Here both Rabbah and Rav Yosef cite two different psukim. Why didn't they use simply the reference to Lechem Oni? The tapuk lay me Lechem Oni. Why didn't they derive it from Lechem Oni, the pasuk connected with that? Namely, mi she'ne'echal ba'aninut. Okay, why? Because remember we had one interpretation that it said it had to be able to be eaten when one was in suffering as an one. Yatsa ze she'ne'echal ba'aninut. And that would exclude then the question of being able to eat it when one wasn't in suffering in aninut. Ela besimcha, but rather, okay, one should be eating the matzah in joy, okay, joy for the holiday. So, namely, savarla karabia kiva. Why? Because in that case, he doesn't ex, uh, accept the drasha of lechem oni as aninut. Because he holds to the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Ani. Right? The Amar Ani, who says where it's written, Ani, Kati, the tepuk lay, the hava lay, matza ashira. Because otherwise, then, okay, we would be concerned that he would try to be fulfill his obligation with enriched, right? Matza, because those other unleavened items associated with either the Todah offering or with the Nazir's offering, those that's mixed with oil. And we had the opinion that anything other than water mixing it with water would make it matzah ashir. Okay, that's our point. Now let's go on with the Gemara. Amar Shmuel bar Rav Yitzchak. Shmuel bar Rav Yitzchak is going to uh, give us a new uh, discussion a little bit here. Okay, but he's reflecting back on what we just what was just said as he as he moves us. Okay. He says as follows. You said that oil was used in those other um, unleavened wafers associated with the sacrifices. And that's why it's a problem. How much oil? Revi'iti. It's really only a revi'is, right? A ver that's really a very minor amount, a quarter of a loaf. Umitchaleket. He the kamachalot. Not only that, but that oil actually is divided up among so many uh, loaves 
that wouldn't that oil be nullified then in the mixture? But in that the case, okay, wouldn't we have to say, okay, that if he wanted to be Yotze, he can't eat it then in any other places, okay? Because the offerings then can only be eaten in Yerushalayim. Amar Reish Lakish. says, Reish Lakish is Zotomeret. Chalot toda urikike nazir neachalin benuv v'givon. That seems to tell us then that those, I call them meal offerings of unleavened variety that were associated with the toda and with the nazir, they could have been eaten in those locations like Nov and Givon, okay? Where we're not necessarily in Yerushalayim, okay? But in other places where there was a valid Mizbeach, okay? Tanya. And now we have a Brita that tells us as follows. Ama Rabbi Eli, says Rabbi Eli, Sha'alti et Rabbi Eliezer, Mahu Shayetse. I asked Rabbi Eliezer, under what circumstances can one satisfy the obligation of matzah? Adam, a person, Bechalot Toda Urikike Nazir, with the uh, um, unleavened items, okay, like that which is offered with the toda offering, or like that which is brought with the Nazir's unleavened offering? Amarli, he said to me, lo shamati. He said, I did not know. In other words, I didn't hear it. In other words, I haven't learned it. Okay. Bati for sha'alti lifnei Rabbi Yoshua. I then went and asked Rabbi Yoshua. Amarli, and he said to me, hare amru, Okay, his answer was that where the individual made these unleavened loaves for the purpose of the Toda offering or the purpose of fulfilling, finishing their Nazarite offering, and they made it for themselves. Ein adam yotzebahem. A person cannot satisfy. In other words, cannot fulfill his Pesach obligation. Limkor bashuk yotzebahem. But to sell them in the marketplace, one can fulfill his obligation. Ukashabati and then when I went and I lectured, in other words, I announced this lesson with this explanation, okay, before Rabbi Eliezer, Amarli, he said to me, Brit, okay, uh, by the covenant. Hein, hein hadvarim shene'em rulo lemosha basinai. These are the very words that were said to Moses at Sinai. Now, there's an interesting just side element here real quick that the Gemara, both Gemaras, uh, both explanations, Korin and Arsko, have a problem with this statement. Well, hello, 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 hello. Okay? No, it's not so much the question of that it comes from Sinai. But it was the f question is who actually said it? Is it Reb it would appear, okay, that maybe Amarli, Rabbi Eliezer, may be the one who's saying it, and it's a statement of astonishment. Okay, you know, gee, you know, great uh, that that could be the case. On the other hand, there are other Mephorshim who say no, maybe it was Rabbi Yehoshua who said it. And he said it as a fact. Okay. So that's why the, the two explanations tell us, that's why all of a sudden 
we have an Ika da Amre. There's another version. Brit, it says, by the covenant. Hain hain hadvarim shene'emrulo lemosha misinai. That these in sense are like are indeed the words that were said, okay, by Moses at Sinai. So the it's possible that Ravina and Ravashi, as the editors of the, if I can use that term of the Gemara, put the Ika da Amre here in specifically because it wasn't clear who made the statement. Uh-huh. Okay? Velo ta'ama bae. Okay, and what happens is no reason given. The ta'ama mai. Okay? So the question is, so what is the reason then? Okay? Is the possibility. Ama raba, says raba. Kol lashuk im luche mimlach. Anything that's sold for the, or produced, let's say, for the market, it's possible that he could change his mind. Amar, he might say to himself, if I'm able to sell it, it's sold. And if I'm not able to sell it, then I will use it to fulfill my Passover obligation. And so therefore, if that's the case, okay, that, that okay, is, uh, could be problematic, right? Because he's, can he really change his intent having made them initially for the offering and not necessarily for the holiday, okay? in that situation, okay? So we're gonna stop there because we have a new Mishnah that starts Lamed Tet, and we'll pick that up tomorrow since we're not gonna be dealing so much with uh, matzah and dough and things like that, but instead we're going to change to maror, okay? So we're gonna get uh, into vegetables over the next Gemara. Okay, everybody. All right, so stay well, take care, and have a good day. Thank you very much.